right, thank you for coming back. This is the fifth and final part in my tutorial series. And in this one, we're just gonna be having some fun making some items and enemy variants. So we're gonna make a bunch of sprites here. We will make some slightly different enemy types. So we'll make an enemy two, which is a little bit different red and an enemy three, which is a bit brighter. We will also make some other new things. Bear with me here. Oh, I did a bad job. All right, that looks pretty centered. We're just making a nice little health pickup. There we go. And we will make a pickup for, oops. This will be a damage pickup. And we will also make one for maximum movement. Oh no. Okay. Um, am I forgetting anything? No. We're done finally with the scripts, sort of, I think. Let's go ahead and make a new object, parent item. And we will go ahead and create some stuff. So this parent item, whenever we collect an item, we're gonna get the stats of the item collected. Um, and to make that really easy, we're just going to make it so um, you always can just do one trigger. So it all, the player will only have to tr tr uh, check collision with parent item. And to do that, we need to make sure that each version of parent item, or each item has reference to all the different stats, even if it doesn't give them to them. So for that, we're gonna do this. This is gonna look kind of weird. So I'm gonna set these all to zero so that when the player, this is this will make it so uh, we can make other items that have only the stat that they give um, and then it will inherit the rest of things. So it'll inherit the zeros so that when the player collects one of these items, it'll just set its H, it'll add HP, maximums, and damage equal to that of the item. And since we're doing this, it will have reference to all of these different stats, even if it doesn't actually give you that stat. So uh, kind of a, it's, it's a hard thing to explain, I guess, but I think that makes sense, hopefully. And lastly, we're going to Clear the grid spot. Or wait. Yeah, yeah, because this is when it destroys. So this is just saying that when the item is removed, it'll be removed from the grid as well. Marvelous. Now. Yeah, no, not a sprite. Let's go ahead and make some items. Let's start with health. We'll make that parented to the parent item and we will go ahead and do this. So first we're gonna do this in a different order. We're going to inherit first so we get all of the stats filled in as zeros and then on top of that we're going to set them to what they need to be which in this case would be hp equals five we'll say so when you collect the health pickup it'll give you five health next we'll do damage so when you collect this we'll give you one hp and one damage same for move. 
Don't get confused though, this is max moves. <clears throat> max moves, not move. Okay, so that's that. Let's now uh, try and put this stuff in the uh, in the, the game. Well, actually first, no, 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 let's not do that first. Let's make the player collision. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy for these collisions. I'm just using the game maker and baked collision system because it's just not necessary to do it otherwise. So all we're going to be doing is uh, collect item gain stats. Yes. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm just adding all of the stats of that item that I collected. And even if it doesn't, like normally if I didn't do the thing, if I didn't reference this, then when I did this, I would get an error when I hit health because it wouldn't know what damage and max, or it wouldn't know what other.damage and other.max moves is because it doesn't have it. But now it's always got some reference to it. And the other way would just be having a different collision for each of these, and that just seems silly. So yeah, this is this is the way to go, I would say. Um, now let's get away to actually put this stuff in the game. Um, and while we're at it, we will go on ahead and make some progression systems. So let's start with uh, level equals zero. So we're going to start at a, uh, a level, and we'll also have like a difficulty type thing. So enemy inc, this is just enemy increment. So with every level, you'll get as many enemies as there are level plus the enemy increment. Um, so now uh, that's actually done. We're now going to go into populate move this down um, and we're gonna do some stuff up here so level plus plus for one so when populate happens the level increases and then we will set enemy num equal to level plus uh, enemy ink so this means it'll start out at like three enemies I think uh, and then it'll go to four then five then six and seven so on um, and Let's now make it so, did we ever make the other enemies? We didn't. Let's do that now, because it sounds fun. So let's make some more enemies. Like I said earlier, we made a really nice system where we can just modify our stats to our whim. So let's make this one just really healthy and annoying. Um, and we should probably edit this one to make it a bit cooler. We'll give it some more damage. Maybe we'll just make this one really bad. No. Ah, oh, so challenging. We'll do this. We'll make it fast but weak. And then this one, yeah, yeah, that one's good. And then we'll make an enemy three, which will look like this. And it will be, this one will just be really bad. No, that just feels bad. Uh, sure. Why not? Okay, I overthought that. Um, <laughs> now we can go into here and do choose, like I was saying a long time ago. So now it can choose between these three enemies when spawning, which is cool. Last but not least, let us make it so these enemies can actually get uh, created. Oh, I've confused myself. Hold on. Oh, right. So... Let's just do this first. So we're gonna do pretty much, I'm just gonna copy paste this. Pretty much the same deal here. We're not even gonna bother making a new variable. Um, we're gonna do this, we're gonna find, we're gonna look for spots until we find an empty one. And then we are going to place a item instead. So it'll be health, 
damage or move. And it's going to set that spot to four. It's pretty much just for pathfinding reasons. Um, and if we want to, yeah, I'll do it. This just makes it so uh, there's only ever one item at a time. Just to make things harder, I guess. What have I done? What have I done? No, really. Symbol 25, what? Line, oh, line, sorry, line 2574. Oh, duh, okay. Okay, um, I mean, I think that's it. I think we've done it. Let's take a look. So now we should be able to collect items and get prizes. So that's a health one. So when we pick that up, we should be able to get also random enemies, fun. So this one's scary because it's fast, but we can kill it in one shot. And these guys are annoying. Oh yeah, my health. So we're taking a beating and a new level happened. And this time, well, I'll pick that up. I want damage. So I have damage now and it gave me some health. So now this should go down to two or to one, I mean, sorry. So we're one shotting these guys. And then I will not pick up that item. Oh, it hurts. Just to show that it will randomize. Yep. So that one should be movements. So now I should have three movements available. Yep, one, two, three. Oh, wait, what? Ooh. Am I crazy? Hold on. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I want that. Okay, so now I should be able to do three. One, two, three. Okay, it's working. I don't know what's happening there. Anyways, um, I hope that you have enjoyed this. That is the end of my tutorial. This is, this is it. Um, there are a number of things I didn't cover, such as, you know, UI, various interfaces, saving, other things making the game fun. It's not very fun as is, but that's not my job, that's yours. Um, so I hope that this is useful to at least one person. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Um, the end. <laughs>